chapter 16. And Samson went to Gaza, and saw there a harlot, and went in unto her. And it was told the Gazites, saying, Samson is come here. And they compassed him in, and lay in wait for him all the night in the gate of the city, and were quiet all the night, saying, Let it be till morning light, then we will kill him. And Samson lay till midnight, and arose at midnight, and laid hold of the doors of the gate of the city, and the two posts, and plucked them up, bar and all, and put them upon his shoulders, and carried them up to the top of the mountain, that is, before Hebron. And it came to pass afterward that he loved a woman in the valley of Sorek, whose name was Delilah. And the lords of the Philistines came up unto her, and said unto her, Entice him, and see wherein his great strength lieth and by what means we may prevail against him, that we may bind him to afflict him, and we will give you, every one of us, eleven hundred pieces of silver. And Delilah said to Samson, Tell me, I pray you, wherein your great strength lieth, and where, wherewith you might, mightest be bound to afflict you. And Samson said unto her, If you bind me with seven fresh bowstrings that were never dried, then will I become weak, and be as any other man. Then the lords of the Philistines brought up to her seven fresh bowstrings which had not been dried, and she bound him with, with them. Now she had liars in wait abiding in the inner chamber, and she said unto him, The Philistines are upon you, Samson. And he broke the bowstrings as a string of tow is broken, which it toucheth the fire. So his strength was not known. And Delilah said unto Samson, Behold, you have mocked me, and told me lies. Now tell me, I pray you, wherewith you mightest be bound. And he said unto her, If they only bind me with new ropes, wherewith no work hath been done, then shall I become weak, and be as any other man. So, so Delilah took new ropes, and bound him therewith, and said unto him, The Philistines are upon you, Samson, and the liars in wait were abiding in the inner chamber. And he broke them from off his arms like a thread. And Delilah said unto Samson, Hitherto you have mocked me, and told me lies. Tell me wherewith you mightest be bound. And he said unto her, If you weavest the seven locks of my head with a web. And she fastened it with a pen, and said unto him, The Philistines are upon you, Samson. And he awoke out of his sleep, and plucked away the pen, pen of the beam and the web. And she said unto him, How canst you say, I love you, when your heart is not with me? You have mocked me these three times, and have not told me wherein your great strength lieth. And it come to pass, when she pressed him daily with her words, and urged him, that his soul was vexed unto death. And he told her all his heart, and said unto her, There hath not come a razor upon my head, for I have been a Nazarite unto God from my mother's womb. If I be shaven, then my strength will go from me, and I shall become weak, and be like any other man. And when Delilah saw that he had told her all his heart, she sent and called for the lords of the Philistines, saying, Come up this once, for he hath told me all his heart. Then the lords of the Philistines came up unto her, and brought the money in their hand. And she made him sleep upon her knees, and she called for a man, and had the seven locks of his head shaven off. And she began to afflict him, and his strength went from him. And she said, The Philistines are upon you, Samson. And he awoke out of his sleep, and said, I will go out as other times, and shake myself. But he knew not that the Lord was departed from him. And the Philistines laid hold on him, and put out his eyes. And they brought him down to Gaza, and bound him with the fetters of brass. And he did grind in the prison house. Howbeit the hair of his head began to grow again after he was shaven. And the lords of the Philistines gathered them together to, the, to offer a great sacrifice unto Dagon, their god, and to rejoice, for they said, Our god hath delivered Samson, our enemy, into our hand. And when the people saw him, they praised their god, for they said, Our god hath delivered into our hand our enemy, and the destroyer of our country, who hath slain many of us. And it came to pass, when their hearts were merry, that they said, Call for Samson, that he may make us sport. And they called for Samson out of the prison house, and he made sport before them. 
and they set him between the pillars. And Samson said unto the lad that held him by the hand, Suffer me that I may feel the pillars whereupon the house resteth, that I may lean upon them. Now the house was full of men and women, and all the lords of the Philistines were there, and there were upon the roof about three thousand men and women that beheld while Samson made sport. And Samson called unto the Lord and said, O Lord God, remember me, I pray you, and strengthen me, I pray you, only this once. O God, that I may be this once avenged of the Philistines from my two eyes. And Samson took fast hold of the two middle pillars upon which the house rested and leaned upon them, the one with, with his right hand and the other was with his left. And Samson said, Let me die with the Philistines. And he bent with all his might. And the house fell upon the lords and upon all the people that were therein. So the dead that he slew at his death were more than that that he slew in his life. When his brethren and all the house of his father came down and took him, brought him up, and buried him between Zorah and Eshtol in the burying place of Manoah his father. And he judged Israel twenty years. Okay, let's go back up here to verse 1. This is where we finish our story of, of Samson, this one who would shine forth with the brilliance of the sun. And Samson went to Gaza, and he saw there a harlot, verse 1, and went in unto her. So Gaza is the strong, means the strong. So he went to this Gaza, and he's found him there a harlot, and he's went in unto her. In verse 2, we find that the, the men of Gaza find out about it, and it was told the Gazites, saying, Samson has come here, and they compassed him, and lay in wait for him all the night in the gate of the city, and were quiet all the night, saying, Let be till morning light, then we will kill him. So Samson's come into the house of this harlot, and he's, he's laying in with her, and the Gazites find out, and we'll find out this, this harlot is one who is, who, who knows the truth, and goes after another god who's found in, have been weighed out and found wanting. These who have been found wanting. So Samson's went in and he's laid up with her in the city of the strong, in the stronghold. And Samson is, while Samson's laying there, these men of the city have gathered themselves and are lying outside in wait for him in the gate. And they have just made themselves comfortable because they figure he's going to be there all night. Verse 3, And Samson laid till midnight, and arose at midnight, and laid hold of the doors of the gate of the city, and the two posts, and plucked them up, bar and all, and put them upon his shoulder, and he carried them up to the top of the mountain that is before Hebron. And Samson has woke up in the middle of the night now, see, and it's going to interrupt their little plan to, to grab Samson, because when he comes to the gate, we see that he just grabs a hold of the gates, this gate to the city of the strong, the stronghold of these Philistines. And these Philistines are the drifters. We have to remember from the last chapter, these drifters who drift from God to God or these ones who have drifted from God themselves. And Samson's laid till midnight here in the city. And when he got up, he's come to the gates and he's plucked up the two posts, these two witnesses, Two is always going to stand for the witnesses, and these posts are the ones who was the a thing that are set to hold the gates of the city. He just plucks them up, bar and all, and this bar is the a bar that would be thrown across the gate to keep a gate locked at that time. And it, this bar comes from a root word that means this is the turning place. This is the place where you turn your enemies back or not. And he put them on his shoulders, and he. And this would signify that he would just carry them uh, as a burden. And he would take them up to this place of Hebron, this mount before the Hebron, this, this mountain, this high place before the association. And Hebron means the association. Verse 4, And it came to pass afterward that he loved a woman in the valley of Sorek, whose name was Delilah. So this, after this little escapade that of Samson's, where he's now took the gates of the city of the strong 
carried him as a burden, and he set him upon the high place before the association. And it came to pass after that he beloved a woman in the valley of Sarek. And Sarek means to visibly be able to witness when the harvest is ready. And what and it literally means that as far as being able to look at the fruit and see it come to its perfection of harvest. And her name was Delilah. So this valley of Sarek where we can see the harvest at its perfection he meets Delilah this woman who and Delilah means to hang in weakness or to be bent down in weakness humbled to be come humbled five and the lords of the Philistines came up unto her and said unto her entice him and see wherein his great strength lieth and by what means we may prevail against him, and we may bind him to afflict him, and we will give you, every one of us, eleven hundred pieces of silver. So now the Philistines, these drifters, have come up, and they've, once again, they've worked their way into Samson's woman, his, his girlfriend here, and they've asked her to entice him to to question him now to figure out try to figure out what makes him so strong that we can that we can have our way with him so we can ask that we can question him we can afflict him and this basically means to question him or to make him uh, come under under them and he will give and we will give you eleven hundred pieces of silver of course these pieces of silver are always going to stand for uh, people, these, this silver, these individuals, and the eleven is for disorder and sin, and the hundred, that which would be apportioned to judgment. So these that are assigned to this judgment, the Philistines want to pay her for this eleven hundred pieces of silver. And this would be the symbolism for these that would be assigned to judgment of for the sin, for the disorder that they've caused. The Philistines are the drifters who are offering Delilah this deal. And Delilah said unto Samson, Tell me, I pray you, wherein your great strength lieth, and wherein you mightest be bound to afflict. And Samson said unto her, If they bind me with seven fresh bowstrings, were never dried, then shall I become weak and be as any other man. Verse seven. So Delilah's asking now, how how can, wherein are you so strong? And she's trying to fall upon his weakness now, as as men are subject to the two women, and, and she is preying upon his weakness. And she's asking, what makes you so strong? And he's going to tell her. A deception. He says, Now if you would bind me with seven fresh bowstrings that were never dried, then shall I become weak as any other man. Verse 8, Then the lords of the Philistines brought up to her seven fresh bowstrings which had not been dried, and she bound him with them. And this seven means God's perfect, the perfection of God. And this would be the, the beginning of the perfect plan of God. And she tried to bind him this first time with these seven fresh bowstrings. These strings that have not yet drawn the arrow had no, had not yet been tested. So she's bound him up. And verse 8, the lords of the Philistines brought up, or verse 9, now she had liars in wait abiding in the inner chamber, and she said unto him, The Philistines are upon you, Samson. And he broke the bowstrings, as a string is in tow, of tow is broken, which he touched with the fire. So his strength was not known. And what she's done, she has tricked him. And we see her plans all together is to, one's trying to deceive the other, and they are both deceived together. The Philistines have offered her payment if she will deceive Samson and find out what makes him strong. And Delilah, who Samson keeps decei has deceived through telling her his great strength, 
and we see that these these bowstrings broke as were like a thread when a thread touches the fire and that's what this would represent just like thread when they touch the fire these these bowstrings which had not yet drawn the arrow these arrows representing the truths of God the when they touched the fire they broke like they were threads so they would not hold up verse 10 and Delilah said unto Samson behold you have mocked me and told me lies now tell me I pray you wherewith you mightest be bound so Delilah's come she said Samson why you, you lied to me and and now you've just made a fool of me verse 11 and th we see that Samson when he woke up just he fought off these Philistines that was in the inner chamber and used to live in just shugging off these Philistines so he didn't comprehend what was going on and he said unto her if they only bind me with new ropes wherewith no work has been done then shall I become weak and be as any other man so he says well this is the real truth but you gotta bind me with new ropes and these ropes represent those things that are woven together to be made strong a rope and it has to be new it's, it has to be fresh it can't ever have been worked with by any man so these ropes be the these fresh things that have been woven together and never tested out by a man to find out if they were they would hold up unto the strain of load verse 12 so Delilah took new ropes and bound him therewith and said unto him the Philistines are upon you Samson and the liars in wait were biting in the inner chamber and he broke them from off his arms like a thread so once again Samson wakes up she yells hey the, the Philistines are here Samson wakes up out of, out of his sleep he jumps up and just snaps these ropes off these brand new ropes like they were threads once again like a piece of thread they snap because why they had never been tested by man and these 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 would be these woven things of which men weave together their teachings and when and they just snap off of of Samson like they're nothing verse 13 and Delilah said unto Samson Hitherto have you mocked me and told me lies. Tell me wherewith you mightest be bound. And he said unto her, If you weave us the seven locks of my head with a web. And this web, what this web is, is like a loom which you would weave a, gar a garment or a rug or any other thing upon. And he said, So if you, here is, the, she says, You've lied to me now and again and how is your great strength how can I bind you up and she and he said to her if you take my hair the seven locks of my head and the seven here once again the seven is going to represent God's perfection and these locks are the individual would be the individual parts of his hair which he had kept his hair in being a symbol of this covering of God of his head these things that keep him bound to God and his his uh, covenant that he has got with God as being a Nazarite as we will soon find out so he's telling her if you take my hair and weave it like you would weave a rug on the on the loom he says that that is would be would hope me and she fastened it with a pen and said unto him the Philistines are upon you Samson and he awoke out of his sleep, verse 14, and he plucked away the pen of the, of the beam and the web. So she, once again, she's got him laid down, and she's wove his hair like this, like he said. And when she yells at him, hey, the Philistines are upon you, he jumps up, and he plucks away this, the pen and the beam and the web. So, and what this is, is the pen is where they would, you would pull the, each strand and, and lock it into the loom. And then you would take the beam, that would be the piece of wood that you would weave on the loom. You would tie a piece of, of cloth to it and weave it through there, and, or a strand, and it would 
weave through there and make strong through this weaving process and you would run this beam back and forth with individual strands between these others that was pinned down and this would be the web itself making this on the loom. So they're weaving Samson's hair or Samson's glory. Your hair is the symbolism of your glory. This covering God has given you a symbolism of your understanding of God's word or his law. 15. And she said unto him, How canst you say, I love you, when your heart is not with me? You have mocked me these three times, and have not told me wherein your great strength lieth. She's crying now. She says, How can you say you love me, and, and your heart is not with me, that you tell me the truth? You have mocked me these three times, and three being the symbolism of completion and have not told me wherein your great strength lies so you've completely deceived me and I don't know how you've been made strong these three times you've you've deceived me and it came to pass verse 16 when she pressed him daily where with her words and urged him that his soul was vexed unto death so after this many much time Delilah had been crying before him has, has urged him with her words until he's come to death and he's tired of it and he can take no more. Verse 17, And he told her all his heart. And he said unto her, There hath not come a razor upon my head, for I have been a Nazarite unto God from my mother's womb. If I be shaven, then my strength will go from me and I shall become weak and be like any other man. So we find that in his weakness, his great weakness, he finally gives up all his secrets, and he tells her, I've been a Nazarite unto God. And this Nazarite would mean, he said, telling her now, I've been a devoted thing unto God. From my mother's womb have I been this devoted thing. And there's never been a razor to my head my glory has never been taken away from me. He said, but now, if I was to have my glory taken away, then I would be weak, just like any other man is weak. Verse 18, And when Delilah saw that he had told her all his heart, she sent and called for the lords of the Philistines, saying, Come up this once, for he hath told me all his heart. Then the lords of the Philistines came up unto her and brought the money in their hand. And this money would be these 1,100 pieces of silver that they promised her, these, this, this sin, this disorder, this conflict, that they would bring the, these drifters and they would get pay her. And this would be the symbolism for, of all those that are signed for, for the judgment of God because of Samson, this one who would shine forth, who is this devoted thing unto God. He is a Nazarite. He had taken a vow his mother had, and from his mother womb, he has been a devoted thing unto God. And these would be those who would be assigned or apportioned to the judgment under this. And she made him sleep upon her knees. And she, verse 19, and called for a man, and he had the seven locks of his head shaven off. And she began to afflict him, as, and his strength went from him. So we'll find that she has caused Samson now to, to go to sleep. She has once again lured him to her lap and caused him to go to sleep. And she has called to a man, and he has come in, and he has cut off the seven locks of, of Samson's hair and, and shaved them off. And it removed Samson's glory. So he, is, he has come in and clipped it off, taken it out, and this would be a symbolism of how his great glory would be taken away, and he would be brought down low. Now, because of, of what he's done, he's admitted to Delilah what his, his secret was the whole th time, that he was devoted, and he's been exposed, and his glory's been taken away, and he has been brought down. Verse 20, and she said, The Philistines are upon you, Samson. 
And he awoke out of his sleep and said, I will go out as at other times and shake myself. But he knew not that the Lord was departed from him. Because when Samson woke up and seen this, that, that he thought he was just like as strong as he ever was before. And when he went out to battle the Philistines that he knew would be waiting for him, he was unable to battle them off. And the drifters overcoming, and they took him, verse 21, and the Philistines laid hold on him and put out his eyes. And they brought him down to Gaza and bound him with the fetters of brass. And he did grind in the prison house. So now they've brought down Samson. They've, they, the Philistines, these drifters, have took hold of him. And they've put out his eyes. That's the first thing they did was put out his eyes. And now Samson's blind, and he no longer can see. And he is brought to the world of darkness. And they brought him down to Gaza, this place of the strong. And they bound him there with fetters of brass. And this brass would be the, the symbolism of brass is, is this cold darkness. They bound him there with these fetters. And these would be the things that would bind him there, this cold darkness. Even there he would be blind. And they did grind in the prison house. And this prison house is, represents the pit, so to speak, as this place of prisoners, this place of darkness. And we'll notice there that they call Samson to grind. And grind would be where he would push in circles a wheel and would grind for them their, their harvest and bring their harvest in for them. And he did grind there. It says, and he did grind in the prison house. And that means for some time was Samson there grinding in his prison house. And this would be the symbolism of how, how the drifters would cause Samson, this mighty one who would shine forth, to grind for them. Verse 22, however, the hair of his head began to grow again after he was shaven. So even after they had brought Samson there, did his glory begin to return to him? And we'll see that's what happened while Samson was there grinding in the prison house. God began to come again unto Samson, and his glory began to grow back upon him while he was grinding. And the lords of the Philistines gathered them together to offer a great sacrifice unto Dagon their God, and to rejoice, for they said, our God hath delivered Samson, our enemy, into our hand. So we see here now all the lords and the Philistines and all those have come to make a gate sacrifice unto their God, Dagon. And this Dagon, half fish, half man, we see this symbolism is still used today, this fish, to show their, their ignorance and how they do serve these who have drifted from the truth of God how they do still serve these ancient rituals through this symbolism. And God causes this to come around. They don't understand that they are part of this devoted thing. The whole thing, the whole message becoming a devoted thing. Our God hath delivered Samson into our hand, and they have caused Samson to grind to this verse 24 and when the people saw him they praised their God for they said our God hath delivered into our hand our enemy and the destroyer of our country who hath slain many of us so they're praising their God Dagon and they're saying God has delivered into their hand this destroyer so they consider Samson a destroyer they know not that he's a judgment sent by the true God a judgment upon these who have drifted from God, who have gone astray, even these who drift from God to God, we see they have another God, and God has sent judgment upon them, and all those all that drift from God. This is the judgment. 25, And it came to pass, when their hearts were merry, that they said, Call for Samson, that he may make us sport. And they called for Samson out of the prison house, and he made sport before them, and they set him between the pillars. So Samson now, he has had his eyes gouged out. He's been grinding away in the prison house. And they've 
these they've called for Samson. They've got all gathered together, having this great big festival in their their house of their god. And they've called Samson out to make sport of Samson. And they brought him out of the prison house, and they placed him there between the pillars. See, because Samson, in verse 26, said, And Samson said unto the lad that held him by the hand, Suffer me that I may fill the pillars where upon the house resteth, that I may lean upon them. And Sam, because, that's why they placed Samson there between the pillars, because Samson has told this lad that was leading him by the hand, Samson having no eyes, this lad representing one having no understanding, he's just doing what he's told. He's bringing Samson forth out of the prison house, and they're going to bring him out into the open here so they can have a little fun with Samson. Now the house was full of men and women, verse 27. All the lords of the Philistines were there, and there were upon the roof about 3,000 men and women, and they beheld while Samson made sport. So they've got Samson there, and they've... they've chained him up between the two pillars of the house and we see here there's about 3,000 men and women on the roof and the, the roof would be the highest place that they could get these men and these men representing men these women representing the teachings of men or these places men would make unto themselves and they've gathered themselves to the highest places they can get and these three represents the complete and a thousand represents the fulfillment so we see this is the complete fulfillment how God has gathered all these to one place these these drifters he's gathered them all up for one purpose and he's got them to the highest point he could get them to verse 28 and Samson called unto the Lord and said O Lord God remember me I pray you and strengthen me I pray you only this once O oh God, that I may be this once avenged of the Philistines for my two eyes. So Samson's calling out to God. He's chained there between these two pillars. And he's crying to God. He's saying, God, remember me just this one time. That I may be avenged this one time of these Philistines, of these drifters. For my two eyes. And these two eyes mean two, the witnesses and the eyes and the eyes of those which would see. So these two witnesses which would see all this in the end, how God has made this devoted thing, brought it to its epiphany, or its highest point, even all those who have all these men who have their teachings in all their high places. And 29, And Samson took fast hold of the two middle pillars upon which the house rested, and leaned upon them, the one with his right hand, and the other with his left. So Samson is there between the pillars, and he starts wrestling back and forth with his hands upon these pillars, one with his right hand, and the other with his left. The left hand would be the hand you would carry your shield with, being the symbolism of your covenant with God. The right hand would be that which you would hold your sword with or your hands you would do your work and he's pushing back and forth on these pillars and as he 30 and Samson said let me die with the Philistines and he bent with all his might and the house fell upon the lords and upon all the people that were therein so the dead that he slew at his death were more than they that he slew in his life and we'll see God granted Samson his wish that he could avenge and bring judgment upon all these Philistines. And he bent with all of his strength, and while he was bending there, wrestling back and forth, they were laughing and making sport because they didn't think, believe none of this. They didn't believe Samson still had any strength left in him. They didn't understand. They thought they had completely stripped Samson of his glory. Or, and gouged out his eyes so that he didn't have no understanding. They were the ones that caused the young child to bring him in there. Under their rule, he was led. 31. We see here that he slew more in his death 
than they which he slew in his life. So in all those that he slew in his life, all those that he would slay even with the jawbone of the ass, those that would be the symbolism of the soft-spoken leader, those which he slayed with that, those which he slayed to get the garments, these 30 pieces of garments, these dedicated garments which represent the coverings of, that he had to give out, all these things from the beginning which he deceived his mother when he gave of them the sweetness that come out of the carcass of the lion. He deceived his mother and father. He deceived Delilah. Samson was a man known for deception. And we see in the end, through deceptions, that they thought that they had Samson and thought they had, they had took out his eyes. In the end, Samson brings the whole house down upon them, for they were deceived in their understanding. This being a devoted thing, even the symbolism of how God shows us over and over and over how he raises up this devoted thing, brings it down to show us over and over. And even this time, for our, these two witnesses, even those who can see these things, is this done for? over and over and 31 then his brethren and all of the house of his father came down and took him and brought him up and buried him between Zorah and Eshtol, Eshtaol in the burying place of Manoah his father and he judged Israel 20 years and we'll remember that's where we started was in this encampment of judges there between Zorah and Eshtaol and Zorah means hornets and Eshtao means questioning. The hornets being the symbolism for these troubles of flesh, the troubles of the, the flesh in the flesh, and these places of questioning, when they begin to question why are they so troubled in the flesh, they would begin to understand these things, that because this devoted thing that God has raised up cannot ever be the Savior, God is your salvation. God, always turn to God, but once again, when they lean on men to save you, when you lean on men to bring salvation, you are only deceived in your understanding. And in the end, the whole house will come down upon you. And they brought him to the burying place of Manoah. And Manoah means those who are settled. And this is who the message is out to, those who have become settled in their understanding, those have, who have become comfortable and who think they have found rest or refuge in their beliefs. It goes out to those who have drifted, the drifters who have, who have drifted away from God, who go out drifting from one God to another, never finding true understanding. See, you should be able to see that this, this thing that men have made, this thing that men have raised up, can't bring salvation. But obedience to the law of God does. And this is the truth. Our obedience to the law of God, through the ten teachings that God gave man, that they could teach by, that they do not. They teach all other things to bring them gain. He judged Israel for 20 years, and this is how long this devoted thing would judge. And 20 means redemption, that it would judge to redemption for redemption's sake, that these who can see, can understand, be redeemed by God, find the truth, find understanding. All right, we're going to move on to chapter 17.